What we're going to be going over here is governmental accounting for a private purpose trust. And what we're going to be looking at here is this private purpose trust either set up as a non-expendable trust versus an expendable trust fund. And when we're talking about uh, these trust funds, they're part of the fiduciary funds here under governmental accounting. And those would include the private purpose trust fund that we're going to be looking at, the investment trust fund, pension trust funds, and the agency funds. So when we're talking about the private purpose trust fund, this is where the government unit here or the governmental body here is going to act as a trustee or an agent for some external individual organization and so forth. So what's going to happen here, this external individual or organization is going to make some contribution here to the governmental unit here and that contribution is going to go into a trust fund and the governmental unit here is going to manage that trust fund per what the external individual is going to have set up here. Okay, so let's look at uh, the private purpose trust fund here and look at non-expendable versus expendable here, uh, this trust fund, and we'll look at what would be included for both the non-expendable and the expendable trusts here and look at the features here. So first, uh, what would be included here for both of them, they accept assets that are invested to produce earnings for a designated external purpose, scholarships and so forth here, or some funding here for the governmental unit. And secondly, all the assets are recorded at their fair value. That includes land and so forth here, investments and that. And then thirdly, changes in the fair value are reported as investment income. And fourth, it's up to the donor to specify how the trust should be set up, either as an expendable or a non-expendable trust fund. Okay, so first looking at the features here in our non-expendable trust fund. Point one here, or A here, earnings are expendable for the specific purpose that's designated here by the uh, person making this contribution or the, gov uh, the other organization making this contribution here, but the original principal amount is not expendable. And uh, secondly here, it must, you must separate between the principal items and revenue items in the trust fund. A common method here is to set up two funds here. You would have for your principal items here in the trust, this is where you're going to protect the principal, and that would be like the endowment principal fund here. And then for the second uh, setup here for the revenue or the earnings on this trust fund, this is the money that can be spent, and you would set up that as an endowment earnings fund. Now for the expendable trust fund, this is the case here where the original principal amount plus any earnings can be spent. And uh, secondly here, otherwise it's operated as, the non, as a non-expendable trust. And then looking at our trust fund accounting here, looking at our non-expendable versus our expendable. For our non-expendable trust here, this is where the principal is left intact and you're going to use normal accrual accounting. So that's the feature here when you're talking about the non-expendable trust. You use normal accrual accounting. And then for the expendable trust, this is where the principal can be spent along with the earnings and you're going to use modified accrual accounting. That's the key here. Expendable trust, use modified accrual accounting. This is where you, using modified accrual accounting, this is where you cannot accrue revenues unless it's available and measurable. So you're going to have deferred revenues here when you're talking about this, the uh, modified accrual accounting. Okay, so let's go up here and let's look at the basic operations here when we're trying to separate those principal and revenue items here. So, trust fund accounting for both principal and the earnings here. So we want to separate our principal items here from our revenue or earning, earning items here. So common method, as I mentioned before, is to set up two funds here. We're going to have uh, A here for the principal items. Again, we're going to protect our principal here. This is where we're going to have the endowment principal fund. And what that is going to be here, this is where you're going to have your ad additions, you're going to have an account here at set up as in your prince in the principal fund here uh, you're going to have addition an account here called additions and contributions this is where you receive some principal amount here in trust here so in this case we have uh, received two hundred thousand dollars here uh, as a contribution to and we're including that in the principal fund so that would be debited here to our additions and contributions here that is the contribution that's made to this trust fund here. And then along with 
our principal items here, we'd have another account here for additions to our revenues here. So here we had the additions to the contribution. That was the principal amount that was contributed to the trust. Now we're going to come down and here we're going to have another account called additions to the revenues here. Now that's really the earnings that this uh, the principal amount is going to earn here for the trust. So our additions to revenues, let's just say for the year here, we have a debit of $15,000. So that's what the trust fund here earned for the year. There's $200,000 worth of principal. It generated $15,000 worth of earnings. Okay, so now this is how, this is the other account that we have to set up. Now we have here, we have to set up, separate out our revenue and our earnings. This is the dollars that can be spent from the trust fund and this we, we would call the endowment earnings fund. So this is the case here we'd have it called additions to interfund operating transfers because the trust fund is going to uh, transfer its funds out of the trust fund to some other a fund or some other source here that the or, uh, source of the of the government's going to have some other source or some other department that's going to be using those trust funds and that we're going to call the earnings fund here and what we would do here for that money that can be spent we would debit that here for in this case fifteen thousand dollars because we have uh, revenues or earnings here for the period and, and from the principal fund here we had that debited here for fifteen thousand dollars now we can transfer out those earnings or credit our addition to revenues fund here for fifteen thousand dollars and we'd bring it into our additions for interfund operating transfers it would be uh, sent out as some operating part here of the government that that trust was set up for so we debit that here for 15,000. That was the transfer in. So we have the transfer out here from our additions to revenues and our principal fund here. And then that goes as a transfer into our additions for interfund operating transfers that goes into that, that account here. And then when we actually distribute out those funds, we would credit or remove those additions to interfund operating transfers. They'd be credited out here and they'd be Distribute, you distribute the earnings for the intended purpose. So key is here, remember the intended purpose. You can't just distribute it out for any uh, purpose. It has to be for the intended purpose. So what we're talking about these earnings here, that's really their only source of assets uh, in the earnings fund is anything that this principal fund here actually earned for the period. So that's the only, that's separating our principal amount here, protecting our principal versus our, our earnings here. So this is what we can actually distribute. Anything that's earned off this principal. Now, that's the case here for, and again, that's our source of assets here for the earnings fund. Is any, in our earnings fund, is anything that this principal generates. Okay, but that, what I just discussed here would be for the non-expendable trust. And we'd operate the expendable trust in the same way here. But the non-expendable trust, you can only distribute the earnings. Now, when we're talking about that expendable trust, that's the case here uh, where you can actually distribute some of this principal here along with any earnings. But in either case, you're going to set up these uh, two different funds here. The principal fund here, uh, where you record here your principal plus any earnings here, and then you'd make your transfers out to the earnings fund. But again, that's the distinct difference here between the non-expendable trust and the expendable trust when, when we're talking about these earnings here and the principal. With the expendable trust, some of this print, the principal amount here can also be transferred out into uh, the addition to interfund operating transfers. But if you uh, move some of that principal out here, just remember that is going to affect earnings and additions to your revenues or earnings in the future. Okay, so now let's go and let's next look at some trust fund entries for these uh, for this uh, these a non-expendable versus the expendable trust fund. And we're really looking here at what they would call that private purpose trust fund, that the government unit is going to act as a trustee. Okay, so next we'll look at the trust fund entries. Now let's look at how we'd record this trust fund here. And it's going to be based on the non-expendable trust. Okay, so first off, we're going to receive some donation of stock here, and the donor is going to stipulate that the earnings 
from this stock here, not the principal can be spent for city park operations. So the first thing we're going to have to do is go down to our trust fund. Remember I mentioned we had the principal fund here and the earnings fund, but everything is really recorded here in the trust fund. I just use that for showing how we would separate our principal from our earnings. So in our trust fund here, we would record those investments in stocks and just say they were worth $800,000 here. That would have been their fair value. So they would have been, we debit our investment in stocks account for $800,000. That's uh, the donated amount here of those stocks. And then moving over to, we'll remember those contributions for the revenues, again in our trust fund here, we're gonna credit that here for $800,000. And in this case, because it's a non-expendable struct, trust here, it's gonna be restricted, those, that investment here, that principal amount. It's gonna be restricted and we're gonna only use the earnings here off that principle. So the key here is these assets here that we're going to be recording here. Record them at the fair value of the securities at the donation date. And then this uh, the principal amount here, $800,000, really it's not expendable here for the non-expendable trust, but if we're talking about the expendable trust, then we can use some of that principal up as well. Okay, so we've taken care of our contribution here. Now let's look at, say, there were some dividends received on the investments here, and they're going to be transferred out to the City Park Operating Fund. That is really the designated use here that the donor stipulated. So this is what we'd be looking at here. In our trust fund again here, we'd have our cash account, and would, that would be for the income here off those stocks here. Generator 15,000 for the year, so we debit, a, debit here our cash account here for 15,000. And then we would move over to our account here that we'd have to set up here as additions to revenues here. That's the earnings from the principal amount, again, in the trust fund here. Remember, I did mention before we had that principal fund here and earnings fund, but actually everything is really recorded in the trust fund itself. Okay, so our additions to revenues here, that income that was received here as dividends from those stocks, we would credit that here for $15,000. Now, we come along here and we're gonna tra just transfer it out to the designated uses here. So we'd have this account set up here, other financing uses here in the trust fund that is where the trust fund's gonna make its transfer out. So the cash account here, uh, they're gonna have used here the 15,000 here. So debit or credit your cash, remove your cash account here for 15,000, and then you would debit your other financing uses here in the trust fund for $15,000. This is gonna be transferred out. That's gonna be transferred out to the designated use. So our additions to revenues, that was our stock income. Other financing uses, this is where we're gonna transfer out that $15,000. In this case, to that city park operating fund. Okay, so the key here is earnings are expendable for that specific purpose that was designated here, that city park operating operating fund here that was the designated, designated use, but the principal amount is not expendable here. That's the case here for the non-expendable trust. Opposite is true for the expendable trust. Okay, the next thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to take the changes in the fair value here, have to be reported. We can report them as investment income. Okay, so let's go down here. Now the trust fund reports the investments or the assets at their fair value. So the case here is the investments or those stocks here are carried at $800,000 on the book, but now we determine that their fair value is actually $788,000. So we go down to our investments in stocks account, that investments account in stocks, again in our trust fund here, and we had those debited here for $800,000. That was their carrying value. But now they went down in value by $12,000 from $800,000 down to $788,000. So now this is where we have to make an adjustments here to the fair value. So in our investments in stock account, we make the adjustment directly into that investments in stock account for those designated stocks here that we're holding in trust. So we would credit that here for that reduction here of $12,000. So that reduces our investment in stocks account by $12,000. That was the adjustment. That's that fair value adjustment that we have to make. Now our net carrying value here in investment in stocks is now 788,000, reduced by $12,000 here from 800,000, the original or the carrying value that we had on the books down to 788,000. So we had a credit here, a reduction in our investment in stock account here 
by $12,000. Now the debit here is going to go to a account called net depreciation here. That's the fair value of the investment. We would debit that here for $12,000. That that re, that reduction here in our fair value carrying our fair value here by $12,000. So that's the fair value adjustment. Remember net depreciation. It was depreciated here or the stocks went down in value so then we put it into this account called net depreciation. Debit that here for $12,000. That's our fair value adjustment. Now we also have another account here called net appreciation. So obviously if those stocks actually went up in carrying value, say they went up from $800,000 to 812,000, then we would have had to debit or increase our investments in stocks here by the $12,000 increase. So they would have gone from 800,000 up to 812,000. Now, the debit here, that would have gone, a credit amount would have been going to net appreciation here, that fair value of the investment, the fair value adjustment. We would credit it here for $12,000. That's if those stocks went up from 800,000 say to 812,000. So then we would have had a net increase here and uh, we'd have our net appreciation here. That's an increase here credit it for $12,000. That's the adjustment here if those stocks appreciated, adjusted to their fair value. So you see what's going on here. You have your investments in stock account, you're making your adjustments directly to that and then there's adjustments here either net depreciation or net appreciation. So you can see what's going on here. You just make that comparison here to see what's going on here between your investments here in those stocks in that case here versus you see that carrying value is either going up or carrying down and it's reflected here. Either there's a net depreciation or a net appreciation. So that would be our fair value adjustment. Okay, so that will really summarize our topic here. Now remember, we went through the case here where we talked about a non-expendable trust where the principal amount was being uh, protected here, but if it was an expendable trust, then some of the principal or these, this, your principal account would be affected here. Your investments in stocks would be probably, you'd have to record here uh, what's going on as far as distributing the principal. But nonetheless here, uh, these trust funds have to report their assets at the fair value here and that that is what we're carrying in. When you're talking about non-expendable uh, trusts here, uh, when you're talking about the, those actually those investments, some of those investments, any really great appreciations uh, could probably be distributed, but then you'd have, to, if you had any net depreciation, then you'd have to hold back on your distributions. You'd have to balance it out such that your investments in stocks for the non-expendable trust, you'd have to maintain some balance here to protect that original principle. Okay, so that'll summarize our topic here on uh, those trust funds here, non-expendable versus expendable.